Phoenix Academy online lesson. I am Mukot Geoffrey, your basic technology teacher. Last week we discussed isometric drawing, which is one method of drawing material drawing. And today we are going to be looking at another method of drawing a pictorial drawing, which is oblique drawing. Okay? At the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain oblique drawing, be able to use your instruments and material to draw an oblique drawing, and also be able to compare isometric drawing, which we did in our previous lesson, and what we are going to be looking at today, oblique drawing together. Okay? All right, apart from these two types of drawing a pictorial drawing that I've listed, which is isometric and oblique, we still have other types of drawing a pictorial drawing, which is perspective drawing and also agonometric drawing. Okay, we are going to be looking at those ones later. Right, so what is oblique drawing? Oblique drawings are pictorial three-dimensional drawings of solid objects. Unlike the isometric drawing, where the two surfaces are inclined at an angle of 30 degrees, in oblique drawings, one of the surfaces, usually the front view, is drawn straight and faces the viewer directly, while the other surface is inclined at an angle of 45 degrees. And if you don't call it oblique drawing, we can also call it oblique projection. Right. So we have some figures down here, and we are going to be looking at them. We have the first one here, figure A. If you take a look at this now, you agree with me that this is an example of what? Isometric drawing. We treated this in our previous lesson. Okay. Then you see the two surfaces. This surface, let's call this X, Y, and Z. Okay. You can see that this surface and this other one is inclined at an angle of what? 30 degree. Okay. If we have our baseline here. You can see that this line is at an, at an angle of 30 degree, and this other line is, is an, at an angle of 30 degree too. All right. So if you take a look at this, you see that. The two surfaces are inclined at an angle of 30, okay? All right. Look at these figures below here. Uh, the figure A we have here is an example of isometric drawing, okay? Take a look at this. You see that two of the sides or two of these lines are inclined at an angle of 30 degrees. We have our baseline here. And you measure this angle. You agree with me that it's going to be 30 degrees, okay? So this side and this other side are inclined at an angle of 30 degrees, all right? If this is the front view, let's call it the end view, and this is our plan, which is the top. Okay, we always call it plan, all right? So you can see that the front and the end are inclined at an angle of what? 30 degrees, and this is an example of isometric drawing, okay? Now, let's take a look at the next figure we have here, figure B. Take a careful look at this figure now. You agree that it's just the same shape that we have here, the same object that we have here, but there's a difference between this figure B and this figure A. Now, this figure B is an example of what? Oblique drawing, which we are looking at now, all right? So you see that you still have the same front surface here, all right? And you have the end here, and you have your plan here. You can see that the only difference between this isometric and the oblique we have here is that the front now is facing us directly, okay? You can see that the front view is directly facing us, unlike the isometric, where the front view is inclined at an angle of 30 degrees, okay? In oblique, the front view is just like a flat shape like this, okay? A rectangle, right? That's the front view, as you can see here. So you see that the front is facing us directly, while you have the end elevation, which is inclined at an angle of what? 45 degrees. We always make use of 45 degrees in oblique projection, right? And we have our plan, right? When we talk about the plan, it's just the top of the object that we call plan, okay? Now, in isometric drawing, you have the isometric axis which are equal, all right? And each of the angles is 120 degrees, all right? And remember that we talk about it in our previous lesson. But in oblique drawing, you can see that the uh, Oblique axis, the three axes, let's call this X, Y, Z, are all equal, and each of the angles is 120 degree. You have 120 degree here, you also have another 120 degree here, and you have 120 degree here, okay? This is what we call isometric axis. But in the case of oblique, this is what we call 
oblique axis, okay? Where I have the length, which is horizontal, they have the width, which is inclined at an angle of 45 degrees, okay? This width is inclined at an angle of 45 degrees, and this angle is also 45 degrees. And you have the height or the depth, which is inclined at an angle of 90 degrees. These are three dimensional drawings, okay? We call it 3D dimensions. So you can see the X, Y, and Z, okay? Now you can see in the oblique uh, axis, you can see the length, the width, and the depth. Don't call it the depth, you can call it the height. Don't call it the width, you can also call it the breadth, okay? Whenever we have three dimensions, you always have Y, X, and Z, okay? Right. Oblique drawing is the simplest method of drawing a pictorial drawing, okay? Because the front will face the viewer directly, okay? And when you are converting this to photographic projection, you see that the front elevation will be the same way as of that of photographic projection. There will not be difference between the front view that is facing the viewer directly and that of the photographic, photographic projection when you are converting it to photographic projection, all right? Oblique drawings are presented either as a camellia or a cabinet drawing. Right? These are the two types of oblique drawing, okay? Cabellia and cabinet. Now in cabellia drawing, the object is drawn at full scale, while in cabinet drawing, the residing axis is scaled by half the size of the horizontal axis. What does this mean? Now, if you are going to draw this in cabellia, drawing, okay, which is the type of oblique drawing. We don't need to reduce anything. You are going to use the full scale. You can see the dimensions attached to the drawing here. Okay, you are going to draw it to full scale. From year to year that you have 80 millimeter, you are going to use 80 millimeter. And the width here that is 42 millimeter, you are going to use 42 millimeter. Nothing is going to be subtracted, subtracted and nothing will be added, okay? But in cabinet drawing, in cabinet drawing, which is another type of oblique drawing, right? The width is going to be drawn at full size of the length, okay? So if the length is 80 millimeter and you are drawing it in cabinet drawing, then the width becomes what? 40 millimeter, okay? So you're just going to divide the length by 2. 80 divided by 2 and you're going to get 40, all right? So you're going to use 40 here, all right? That is for cabinet drawing. So take note of that. Cabinet drawing, the slanted side is drawn half of the full uh, half, of, half of the full side of the front view, okay, or the uh, the, the length given. All right. So take note of that. All right. So we are going to be we are going to be constructing this oblique on the board so that you can follow me and be able to draw with your instrument too at home. All right. All right. So let's try to construct or draw this oblique drawing that we have here on the board, okay? So just watch out the steps and follow me carefully, okay? So for us to do this, you are going to be making use of your drawing instruments and material. So you pick your drawing instrument, you can either use your ruler or your T-square to draw the horizontal line, but since you are going to be doing that at home, if you don't have your drawing board, just pick your ruler, okay? So let me try and use my T-square here. So the first thing we are going to do is to draw a horizontal line, okay? Just the same step with that of isometric. First step, you draw a horizontal line, all right? So we have a horizontal line. Then you pick a point where your drawing is going to start from, okay? So let's call that point A, all right? So we're making reference to this drawing that we have here. If you look at this drawing, you see that we have point A here, all right? That's where our drawing starts from, all right? So you see that line AC is horizontal line, while line AB is an inclined line at an angle of what? 45 degree. Okay, remember this is an oblique drawing, so the inclined lines must be at an angle of 45 degree. Alright? So we can either draw line AC, line AB, or line AE, since all the lines are connected to what? Point A. So let's draw line AC. Since our line AC is horizontal line, all we just need to do is to measure 80 millimeter on this horizontal line that we've got in, all right? So you pick your ruler and measure 80 millimeter, all right? 
So this is our 80 millimeter. Alright. So once we have 80 millimeter, we don't want to use the ruler to take out the dimension. You can make use of your compass. Alright. Take it from zero to eight. That's eight centimeter, which is equivalent to 80 millimeter. Okay. Then you transfer it to the line. Okay. Alright, so once we're done with that, we've gotten our line AC. This point becomes our C. Alright? So we've gotten the horizontal line here, which is 80. Alright? So we can choose to start or continue with line AE or line AB. Alright? So we see that line AE is a vertical line. Okay? It's inclined to this horizontal line at an angle of um, 90 degrees. That's the perpendicular line. Okay? Alright, so we can draw line AE or line AB. So if you are drawing line AE, you still pick your ruler, if you are using ruler, if you are using T-square, set your T-square and make sure it corresponds to that line that you've drawn before, alright? Then you pick your C-square, alright? This is 45 by 45 degrees C-square, okay? There's a difference between this C-square and the other C-square that have 30 uh, 60 and 90 degrees, all right? So since we are dealing with oblique drawing, you are going to be using this because this is the only set we have an angle of 45 degrees, all right? So it also have an angle of 90 degrees. This angle is 90 degrees, while these two other angles are 45 degrees, all right? So we are going to be drawing line AE, which is a vertical line. So you place your set square this way. Make sure you press on your ruler, all right? So when you've done that, then you draw a straight line going up, all right? That is our line AE, all right? So we can continue with this other line, which is connected to line A. Remember, we are drawing all the lines that is connected to line A here. Yeah. So we are going to draw line AB, all right? So you see that that line is inclined at an angle of 45 degrees. So you do the same thing. You must always set the ruler or your t square so that it corresponds to that first line that you've drawn. All right, so when you are done with that and you have the line correctly, you can set your set square this way on it. You can see you hold it with one hand, then you use the other hand holding your pencil and you draw an inclined line. All right, you can see that. So if you use your protractor and measure the value of this angle, you agree with me that you are going to get 45 degrees. All right, all right. So we can start taking the dimension. We already have here that is 80, AC, 80. So we are going to measure AE. The value is given here, the value of the dimension is given here. AC is equivalent to this line, BF, and is equivalent to this other line, CD. Okay? So this line, this line, and this line that are parallel to each other are all the same. And the value is given to be 45, uh, 45 millimeters. Sorry. So you measure 45 millimeters. You can either use your ruler and measure 45, okay? So let this be our 45 millimeter, okay? So you do the same thing the other way. We're not taking the dimension of this other line that is inclined at an angle of uh, a 45 degree. So the dimension is also given here to be 42 millimeter. Line AB and line EF and line DG are all parallel to each other. And the value is given to be 42 millimeter, right? So you place your ruler this way. If you don't want to use your ruler, you can also use your compass to pick the dimension, then you transfer it here, right? So let's take this to be our 42 millimeter, right? So this becomes our AB, all right? And this is our AE, all right? So we've gotten the three lines. You can see the three lines here that we talked about, the isometric axis. This other one, the width, uh, the depth, and the length, okay? This is the length, this is the width or the breadth, and this is the height or the depth, all right? These are the three axes that we will, we will make reference to, all right? So let's continue, continue. If you look at point E here, yeah, this point, you can see that there are other lines that are connected to point E, right? You have line EF, you have line ED, okay? They are all connected to uh, that point E, all right? So let's draw those lines, line EF and line ED, 
All right? So you set the ruler, you must always set the ruler or your T square under that line you've drawn the horizontal line. All right? So when you've done that, we are going to draw line EF now. And you can see that line EF is parallel to line AB. And it's at an angle of 45 degrees. So you place your assessment this way. Make sure that the 45 degree side is facing the vertical line. You slide it until you get to that point, OK? When you get to that point E, then you hold it with one hand, and you, you draw the line that is traveling to the right hand side, OK? Then once you are done with this, you can simply join line BF together, OK? You see that line BF is at the end, the right hand side there. And we already have point B. So all you need to draw is to draw, all you need to do is to draw a, a, a vertical line moving from B to meet this line that is coming from E, okay, to give you line B, F, all right? So you set the set square this way on your T-square, slide it until you get to that point, point B. When you get to that point B, all right, make sure it's properly set, then you draw the line to meet the other line, all right? So we've done that. And this point becomes point F. All right? So you see that we've gotten one face of the object we are drawing now. That is the end elevation, OK? I see the end here, which is also the end here. All right? We've gotten the end elevation already. All right? So what is remaining is the front and the plan. All right? For us to get the plan, we are going to draw line ED. You can see that line ED, line uh, AC, and line MG, they are all parallel to each other, all right? So the distance from here to here, the distance from here to here, and the distance from here to here, they are all equal, all right? So all you just need to do is to draw a parallel line from E to your left hand side, all right? So let's do that. How do you do this? You also make use of your this way or your ruler, and you set your ruler like this. Make sure that the 90 degree angle is facing the right hand side, okay? Then, when you've done that, when you've done that correctly, you can, as if you are going to redraw this horizontal line, you use, okay? When you've done that, you use your ruler to support the left hand side, all right? You can see how I set my uh, set sphere and my ruler. Okay, once I've done this, I can slide it up until I get to point E. When I get to point E, I hold it with one hand, then I will draw my other line that is traveling to the left hand side. Okay, so you can see that we've gotten line E, D. All right, all right. So what is remaining now for us to get the front view of this object that we have here is to complete this other line line CD, okay? So you see that line CD is a vertical line, and for us to draw a vertical line, we set our ruler this way, okay? So that it corresponds to the horizontal line that we've drawn, all right? Once you've done that, then you place your set square on it, slide it until you get to point C. When you have point C, then you draw a line from point C to meet the horizontal line, all right? So this point now becomes uh, point D. All right? So you can see that we have our point D. And we have our front elevation here complete. All right? So we have our front elevation here. We have our front here. We have our end already. So what is remaining now is the plan. That is the top of the object that we are drawing. OK? The plan is what is remaining. All right? So, we have to make reference to our drawing. You see that we've gotten line EF already. What is meaning is line GF and line DG. All right? So let's do that here. For us to draw our line DG, you set the ruler so that it corresponds to the horizontal line. All right? You can see that line DG is parallel to line EF and is parallel to line AB. So you set your assess here so that you have that angle of 45 degree, all right? Then you draw it 
to your right hand side. Take a look at the line, see that it's traveling to the right too. Alright? We've got the line DG. Okay? But we have to measure out the dimension. Since line AB is for the 2 millimeter, line EF is for the 2 millimeter, you can also agree with me that line DG will be for the 2 millimeter. Okay? So you just have to use your ruler to measure for the 2 millimeter. If you want to do that, if you don't want to do it, you can just join line F to this other line that you've drawn, okay? Then you have your point G. How do you do that? You set your ruler this way. Set your set square first. Let the angle of 90 degrees be facing your left hand side this way, all right? So when you've done that, use your ruler to support it, all right? Make sure it's well supported. When you've done that, then you slide it up, 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 until you get to point F. When you get to point F, then you connect it to the other line that you've drawn. All right? You can see how simple this is. Then we have our, our point D here. And you, you see that we've gotten our plan, all right? Which is the top of the object, all right? So this is simple enough, right? All you just need to do, if you take a look at the drawing, you see that dimensions are also attached to it. So you are going to insert their dimensions too, all right? And for us to do that, you also make use of the ruler and your set sphere, all right? To insert your dimensions. So let's insert our dimensions. We have this, all right? Then we can bring this down. Bring this down too. Remember the dimension lines must be prior to the line you are trying to show the dimension. All right? So you take this this way. All right? And this this way. All right? So the dimension lines must not touch the drawing. It must not touch the drawing, OK? You give a little gap of maybe just a little gap. Just, uh, one millimeter, as the case may be. Just let it not touch your drawing, okay? So once you've done that, you can start drawing the dimensions lines. The dimensions line should be at least 10 millimeter away from your drawing, okay? What I mean by that is that the distance from here to here should be at least 10 millimeter. It can be more than 10 millimeter, but just make sure it's not less than 10 millimeter, okay? So you put that this way again, all right? Then you put your arrow, you must always put arrow to show the dimensions line, okay? Put your arrow here, put your arrow here, all right? Everywhere you have the dimension line, you always put your arrow, all right? All right? So you also make reference to the drawing that you have copied. You see that this line is 80, so you write your 80, okay? See the way I wrote my 80 here? You see that the 80 is not touching the dimension line, and it's at the center of the line, okay? So when you're writing your own, don't write it in such a way that the 80 will be touching or crossing the dimension line. It must not touch the line, okay? Let it be a little bit above the line, all right? So you, you do it this way. Write your 80. So that my 80 is not touching the line, it's at the center of the line. So we are going to do the same thing here. This side is given us for the file here. Remember that this line, this line, and this other one, they are the same. Okay? So if you don't put your dimension this way, you can put it this other way. All right? Anywhere you put it. For providing you are showing the dimension. Right, sorry, let's just put it the, the exact place where we have it in the drawing here. All right? So let's put it this way. Let's clean this other dimension line. All right? So you have for the file here. Okay, so you take a careful look at it, you see that it's not touching the line, okay, and it's also at the center. Then you have the last dimension line, which is here, all right? You have it there, so you can bring this line down. Then you have your dimension line this way. You just move this angle up to the five degree so that you see it clearly. So 
Sorry. All right, so you put your arrow here, and you put it here too. And you have that dimension, which is given as 42 millimeter, okay? Remember, all the dimensions are in millimeter, all right? So when you are drawing, don't miss it up. Don't use millimeter in some places, use centimeter in some places, and use inch. And uh, some places, okay. You are going to use millimeter all throughout, all right? And don't add millimeter at the back of the figure, all right? So that not add 80 millimeter here. Since all the dimensions are in millimeter, just write 80, and I will know that the dimension is in millimeter because the structure will be given to you. All right, I have an activity for you. Draw the oblique drawings below using. The exact dimensions attached to it. Alright, so you can see the drawings below here, the first one. Uh, see that the dimensions are attached to it. You have the angle of 45 degree here. 25 uh, millimeter is given as millimeter is given here. Uh, you have here 52, you have here 21, 10, 30. Alright? So you can see all the dimensions clearly. And the second one, you have to do the same thing too. You are going to reproduce this, you're going to draw this complete drawing, okay? Use the exact dimensions attached to it, all right? So that is all for today. We've come to the end of the class. Until I come your way again, stay safe and remain blessed.